Hi everybody, I'm here for Fresh New Books of YA slash Franklin Friday. And um, today I'm going to be reading from Falling in Love with English Boys by Melissa Jensen. And um, I just reviewed this the other day, so um, you can check out my review um, and leave a comment. Uh, and see what it's all about and uh, what I thought of it. Um, so I'm just going to be reading just from, uh, because the story is told in two parts one present day and one from 1815. I'm just going to be reading from right from the beginning with the present day. So, let's get started. The Cat's Catastrophic, Cataclysmic, Catatonic Summer Blog, June 22nd, Transatlanticism. Airplane bathrooms are only a step above the ones found in gas stations, unless you're in first class, which I'm not. I haven't even seen first class on this plane. It's upstairs. Apparently, you sit in your own private little pod, which, when you think about it, must be kind of like sitting in the lavatory here in Coach, but with your own movie screen and room service. Airplane food. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are offering you a choice of spinach stuffed chicken in a lemon tomato sauce, or two cheese ravioli in a spinach chicken sauce. It's disgusting. Unless you're in first class, which I'm not. Or flying Air France, which I'm not. I would much rather be going to Paris than to London. Paris has croissants and Dior and boys who look like Orlando Bloom but say things like It gives me such ennui and merde. London has sandwiches made with cucumbers and butter, guys with bad teeth, and the library where my smother will be spending the summer trying to get to know some woman who did absolutely nothing of import and has been dead for 200 years. I still wanted to stay with Dad, but apparently the soon-to-be stepmonster needs his spare bedroom for her office. Like she can't keep her teetering towers of bridal mags, sample menus, and bad band dem demos in her own office until the, wedi until the wedding. But then, I've never actually seen her place of work. Perhaps she is not the on-the-rise cleaning product executive she claims to be. Perhaps she is but a lowly soap bar wrapper without so much as a cubicle to call her own. Wouldn't surprise me. So then I'm thinking, I'm 16, totally old enough to stay on my own for a few weeks. Mom actually laughed when I suggested it, which wasn't entirely unexpected. Then told me it was a moot point as she was renting the apartment to a visiting professor from Kazakhstan, which it kind of was. But I planned to beat her and suggested staying with Grandma and the Burbs. GM would have been happy to have me and offered to drive me to and from the SEPTA train station every day so I could get a job in the city. Mom's response to that? According to her, since discovering Dr. Phil, GM has become Freud with a chainsaw, whatever that means. Then she said that GM is also developing a pernicious mochaccino habit that makes her a caffeinated hazard behind the wheel, and an even worse eBay addiction, which has resulted in a closet full of designer knockoffs made in Chinese sweatshops. Mom is so obsessed with third world labor issues. With all due fondness, Mom says, she wouldn't leave the dog with her mother for more than an afternoon. As jolly old, horsey houndy England has never had a single case of rabies, there's this bizarre pet passport thing, and the dog can't come with us because Mom missed the deadline. He's staying with Mom's teaching assistant. Apparently, my passion for reality TV isn't the kind of rabid they fear, so here I am, jetting over the Atlantic. For the next eleven weeks, while you, my beloved friends, have the CW and texting and weekends at the shore, I'll have buttered cucumber and the queen and this blog. Mom swears the apartment, excuse me, the flat, has high-speed internet access. Guess I'll find out when we land at 6 a.m. tomorrow, Meriday. One pale, tiny glimmer of light has just pierced the gloom, one other than the occupied light over the lavatory door. London might actually have Orlando Bloom. June 23rd, who knew? I've learned these English things. Their ground floor is our first floor. Hence, when they say third floor, it's actually the fourth. As in, charming third floor flat, a stone's throw from Regent's Park, no lift. They say lift, we say elevator. They must all be champion shot putters. I figure I could throw a stone to the park, oh, with the aid of a grenade launcher. If you lean all the way out the window, avoiding the copious pigeon mare day, and think creatively, you can kind of see some green over all the pink, br over all the brick chimneys. When a girl with serious jet lag sleeps until 3 in the afternoon, the only sandwiches left at the so-called sandwich shop are egg mayo, 
egg salad, yogurt prawn, shrimp, and chicken rocket. I had no idea, but it was very yellow and very green. There is nothing on the telly at 3 a.m. except test match cricket. Read, will test your viewing endurance with its endlessness, and reruns from the third season of Friends. High-speed internet access here is an oxymoron. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, um, I didn't get to read from the historical sections, but they're um, good too, in their own right, even though I'm not much of a historical fan. Um, and this is uh, a book. It's coming out as paperback, December 23rd. Um, it's just going to be $7.99, so it's definitely worth the price. And um, yeah, so if you want something, if you like your overseas romances and you like dual narratives with contemporary and historical, this is the book for you. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I can't wait to see everybody else's fragments. And wanted to remind everybody that this is the last Fragment Friday of 2010 because the next two weeks are um, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve and so holidays and stuff like that. Nobody's going to have time to do anything. So, um, I'll see you all in 2011. Bye.